Thinking aloud. Conversations on the leading edge of knowledge and discovery with psychologist Jeffrey Mishlove. Hello, I'm Jeffrey Mishlove, and today I'd like to address the topic of facing old age. As I've mentioned many times previously in the In Presence segments, I'm 71 years old right now as I speak. Now that means that I'm at the very beginning of my old age of the phase of life that we could call aging, really seriously aging. And I know as I've passed through many different phases of life, it's often been useful to talk to people who have been through it themselves so that you can get a taste of what to expect. And I suppose to put it in the most blunt and simple terms, old age is in many regards a preparation for death and dying. It's simple because gradually the body gives out. Gradually one has less and less control <laughs> over your physical vehicle, your body. Now, to some degree that can be alleviated with all sorts of new electronics and uh, uh, the, the linking of human and machine. We're becoming androids to a certain extent. but. Let's look at the realities of old age. There are many, many different conditions that are common, common in old age. Loss of hearing, loss of eyesight. I'm already starting to address, and, and more than address, to incorporate might be the best word, the uh, a condition known as neuropathy. You lose sensation in the extremities, in the hands, and in the feet, and gradually, I guess, it can grow. Uh, people develop arthritis, aches, and pains. And of course, you're much more vulnerable to pulmonary diseases, respiratory diseases, heart diseases, cancer, uh, diabetes, <laughs> just about every disease is going to be more prevalent as you get older. And to make matters even worse, you've got Alzheimer's. Did you know that 50% of people over 85 years old have Alzheimer's? It's a very serious disorder of the short-term memory for which, as of this moment in time, there is no cure. It's simply a degenerative disease. It's going to get worse and worse as you die. Now, of course, as you get older, it's harder to earn a living as well. You can't do the kind of work that you used to do. And an interesting thing, in the United States, supposedly one of the wealthiest countries in the world, I read a statistic recently that said 60% of American families, if they had to come up with $1,000 on an emergency basis, they would not have the cash available. That's 60%. Now, I'm a baby boomer. I was born in 1946 in December, you know, shortly after the Second World War ended. So you could say I'm at the vanguard of the baby boomer generation. Um, demographers have sometimes talked about the baby boomer generation is like the pig and the python. That is to say, statistically speaking, there are a lot of us. And we are all approaching our old age right now. Right now, it's happening. And it's happening without adequate financial reserves. It's happening at a time when the government is very interested in eliminating or privatizing or otherwise doing away with many of the safety nets that uh, elderly people depend upon. So we're being thrown back on our own resources. And if you're the sort of person who has been largely living in a material world, and then you lose all of the material qualities that you associate with a young and healthy body, what are you to do? Perhaps you could be like uh, 
the late great Stephen Hawking and live in the realm of the mind. But if you get Alzheimer's, even your mind isn't going to be there for you. That's why I believe it is very important for the baby boomer generation in particular, but all people, generally speaking, to develop a strong inner knowing, a strong sense of one's spiritual being. Because, well, one might say of death that it is a time when you have to exist as a pure spirit, or at least one might say a, a, an astral being or an etheric being or some being with a not a normal physical body, because it won't be there for you. You may find that you have some other kind of body, but it won't be the physical body you're accustomed to. You're going to have to learn to get by, at least for a while, without any physical body at all. And old age is a preparation for that. Gradually, slowly, the body itself loses its former capacities. It can take 25 years, perhaps, the old age period. I might well live un until I'm 100. So that would be 29 years from now. One of uh, my dear friends and uh, a person I've interviewed many times, Houston Smith, the great scholar of religion, died just over a year and a half ago. Houston Smith was 97, a wonderful human being, a great writer, a man of huge heart. But he had to spend the last year or more of his life in bed. He didn't have the strength to lift himself out of bed. That's what it can come down to. That's what each and every person needs to be prepared for, and not to mention the caretakers, because if you're depending on a loved one to take care of you, a loved one who is near in age to you, well, you're going to both be taking care of each other as best you can. However, that creates an enormous stress and strain. The caretakers themselves need to be cared for. I say this as a, I don't want to use the word warning, but as an indication that uh, preparation is required for entering into this phase of life. And many people will draw comfort and strength from traditional religions. Other people will draw comfort and strength from art and poetry and music or from family relationships. But there will come a time when you need to go deep, deep within yourself. I once interviewed uh, the now deceased medical doctor, Brew Joy, who was a healer and a doctor, and he explained to me that there are certain spiritual initiations that are available to you in old age. He said some initiations you have to be 80 years old for, you won't get initiated at all. There are initiations you have to be at least 70. There are probably initiations, uh, following his logic here, that are available once you reach 90, and perhaps not before. Now, I don't think that the chronological age is actually the deciding factor, but there may be many circumstances in life, many insights, many levels of awareness, many psychic openings that are only going to come to you if you're open and ready and prepared for them at the time when you need them. And as we get older, our needs increase enormously. That's one of the reasons that I'm creating all of these videos. There are now over 600 individual videos that have been uploaded onto YouTube, all of them dealing with the life of the psyche, the inner mind, both at a psychological and at a spiritual level, and many other levels in between. This is a resource for you. 
And some of you will want to take advantage of it as best you can. I encourage people to delve in deeply, dive in, enjoy this material because you're not going to find it in very many places, unfortunately. It's not the sort of thing you're going to get in academia. It's not the sort of thing you're going to get from most churches, although they all offer some preparation for this phase of life. But to the extent that you can become more and more familiar with the inner depths of your own psyche and the resources deep, deep within you, you will be best prepared to face aging. And I'm going to leave you with one question. What can you do now to help the aging process, the inevitable aging process that you are going to face? What preparations can you and ought you to make right now? Thank you for being with me.